welcome to Assembly Calendar. I'm Mike Frieson. With us for our program, Assemblyman Bob Oaks. Bob Oaks represents the 130th Assembly District, an assembly district that includes the counties of Wayne, Cayuga, and Oswego. And we thank you folks throughout that region for joining us. Good day to you, Bob Oaks. Well, thank you very much, Mike. This is the time that a uh, little warmer weather, oh, the apple blossoms uh, are coming it. out in the 130th uh, Assembly District, as well as lots of other blossoms. and. Uh, it's a uh, baseball season. This is a positive time uh, overall. I spring. think we can look forward to uh, hope, maybe. Spring, spring has sprung, even at the state capitol in Albany. Uh, but we've got some headlines to talk about that are not as mm, renewing as some of the uh, things that you just laid out for us, Bob Oaks. We have to get, uh, I don't know, to the uh, uh, underbelly, the uh, seamy underbelly of things here at the state capitol. We've had, since the last time you and I have sat down for one of these programs, yet more convictions of state legislators, colleagues of yours, more charges against legislative leaders, Senate Majority Leader Dean Skelos now facing charges from federal authorities, much like the Assembly Speaker Sheldon Silver at the beginning of this legislative session. Um, it's putting a renewed spotlight, which I, I have to think is a good thing, on the ethics uh, problems facing this New York State Legislature. Well, we, it's been uh, really disheartening being in the midst of it and certainly talking to people back home. It, people look at you with a bit of a quizzical look of saying, what's going on? And uh, it is very frustrating when you see uh, that people either have or apparently or have been charged with uh, trying to figure out how to uh, self uh, or benefit from uh, their position uh, as uh, a state legislator or an official uh, within uh, state government. And, you, you know, it, it, that really hits to home. I, I was just at an event the other night, um, and uh, we, uh, it was a Boy Scout event, honored some local people one of those, Jim Hoffman, chairman of the Wayne County Board of Supervisors. The guy had a 30-year career in state police, the last 10 years chairman of the Wayne County Board of Supervisors, high-quality guy. He got honored for what he's done in setting a model of who we want the next generation of leaders uh, to be. Uh, Jim just announced, actually, uh, last week that he isn't going to run for, for re-election. It just sat there and I pondered a bit on, here's a guy I've worked closely with, uh, quality guy, doing it for the right reasons. He's not coming out of this job with fatter pockets. Um, I think he comes out of the job with a sense of a feeling that I did things to make things better and along the way make sure the ship of government ran. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what people in elective legislative uh, office or as the executive running things ought to be doing. It's a call to public service. A absolutely. That's what it's supposed to be, a call to public service. But what we're seeing with these convictions and charges and indictments and arrests and the handcuffs and all that are apparently people who don't have that call and come to Albany thinking, I'm going to make out somehow. Or if they did have the call, uh, being in the midst of uh, gaining power or seeing the system and moving the lines and crossing the lines and whatever, that then say, how can I benefit instead of how can I make decisions that most uh, or best benefit the people that I represent and the people across New York State. We're a very diverse state. This is not an easy task. It's a mishmash of things. Uh, but above all, it at least ought to be done in a responsible, honorable way. And what we've seen is a whole number of people who obviously have not ended up uh, carrying out that task. So what are the best ways to do something about it? There are a lot of different ideas out on the table, differences of opinions as to how best to stop all this from happening. You hear about term limits ideas. Uh, some people say public uh, financing of campaigns is the way to go. It'll remove that quid pro quo of uh, pe people like yourself who have to run for office every couple of years. I mean, this, these, these two-year terms 
uh, it's like an ongoing election cycle with uh, needing to raise money for elections and campaigns and then the people that donate the money expect something in return. I mean, it's, uh, it's gotten complicated. Well, it has, and uh, the answers are specific, precise answers, I think are very difficult. There's been some search for those, um, and, but in the midst of what we did in this year's budget to strengthen the ethics laws, mm -hmm. uh, they talk about putting things out, having more disclosure. Transparency. You hear That's that all word. good. You hear that word a lot. Uh, but sometimes people try to figure out how to hide that in the midst uh, of, of that. Um, and so you're still depending on people being forthright uh, with that. Y you know, I, I think one, the call to who people elect, I think, and how we, perhaps how we uh, vet them Maybe ne we need to do a better job of that, and maybe, uh, you, you know, you challenging me today, maybe I need to think more about that process. How do the next generation of leaders uh, get here? What is their view going to be? Is it what I can get for me uh, as they come in? And maybe, maybe the press needs to ask people that. Uh, maybe we, as the people vetting who comes in, local Republican and Democrat committees, what is our expectations of you as that person going in? Uh, so maybe that's a, a, a modest way of, of impacting that. Um, term limits, certainly uh, the problems that uh, Sheldon Silver and Dean Skelos uh, have encountered uh, certainly seem to be that because of the length of time they were in, as being strong leaders within the system, they were able to begin to, uh, maybe day one, their intentions were <laughs> all right on target, but it seems like along the way, either the people around them or they themselves ended up starting to look at, well, if we do it this way, mm -hmm. um, others could benefit, but so could I, and so could you. Right. And The outcome might be the same but yet things still get compromised somehow. Right. So, so maybe you, you mentioned the term limit. Uh, certainly within the leadership of the houses, there's so much power. We deal with a budget this year in nearly $150 billion. Um, the nuances and decisions within putting that process together, certainly um, term limits could work. The campaign finance thing, I, I get anxious with because that's a whole nother manipulative, manipulative system as well. And you look at New York City, which uses it. Um, it hasn't, you, you know, weeded out, stopped the challenges that they some have. Some say it's so, made it worse. And, and some say it has. Right, we've it's, seen some, yeah, uh, uh, some, of some of that here with the uh, se some, a couple of senators yep. who have been charged because they wanted to get on the ballot so that they could run for the mayor of New York just so they could have access to the money and then use it for whatever they wanted. Uh, and so, yeah, it almost seems like that's the worst idea ever, if you look at it from that right. point of view. Right. It, it's interesting, you talk about the $150 billion budget and all, and y you, know, you, you really start to wonder, that the legislative leaders, they put this together, the governor, um, it is said, I have read some of the, the stories that have been written, that there are, there's funding w within that that really isn't earmarked for anything. It's it's uh, allowed to be used by the governor and legislative leaders at their discretion. Well, and, so and it might go for funding of things, but it goes to that question of well, who's making that decision then, and is it a, it is it a made? public decision? Are other people aware of it? Sort because of fairness it, is it, it all comes back to that question of do you act differently if you're alone in the room than if somebody's there watching you? Yeah, and. And very clearly, I think, in this year's budget, uh, there's probably more of those dollars than there have been even in other years. So we're looking at, in the midst of calling for more control and transparency, we may be, you, you know, slide over in the midst of that and end up with greater opportunity for moving those dollars around for somebody's benefit as opposed to um, what 
a focus a target ought to be for the state. Some tells me this well, there's still a long way to go with this discussion here at the state capitol. Would we, you agree we, with that? A absolutely. Yeah. Minimum wage was an issue that came up just a few hours ago on the assembly floor. Again, you're the ranking Republican member on the assembly's Ways and Means Committee. You helped lead the debate uh, as this issue came up for discussion. But now we're in the midst of an escalating minimum wage right now from prior legislative action. But apparently it's the governor who's pushing for an even higher minimum wage for New York State. I absolutely. The, the assembly majority yesterday uh, passed legislation. Uh, now that's one house. Not, hasn't been considered in the Senate. Governor hasn't fully weighed in on that. But um, it would have a two-level uh, minimum wage for New York State going forward. Right now it's eight seventy-five. It's going to go to nine dollars by the end of this year. This would have it go to, I believe, ten fifty, eleven fifty, and twelve sixty upstate over the next three years. And downstate, it would end up at the end of those three years being fifteen dollars an hour. Um, in addition, in the tipped wages it would increase workers who work for tip wages. That would increase those uh, significantly as, as well. And, and we just had an increase actually by regulation, not by uh, legislative uh, determination. Uh, tipped workers are going to, at the, I believe at the end of this year, be going from $5 an hour to $7.50 an hour uh, that employers would need to pay before they those employees also get their tips. Now, the, the, the impact, you, people can look at this, well, people can't live on these dollars. And right. the argument, as we're in the assembly, uh, is along that. But it, it's interesting. Uh, a restaurateur was in and mentioned, OK, he goes, I have, he goes, my uh, expenses that I have, about 30% goes to labor, about 30% goes for the food, and, you know, around that, and about 30% for my mortgage, for Utilities. advertising, whatever. Mm -hmm. And about 10% is left for me to, to live on. He goes, okay, so if you just, in, in this scenario, the individual by is going to have to pay um, another $25,000, I think, in the example was, for wages to get those up to, um, y y you know, the new, the, 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 new, the, the new minimum wage mm -hmm. level. He goes, but you just heard me say 10% is what I give it. So I have to sell at my little diner 250000 more dollars of food for me to have the same wage or, you know, the, the, at the end of the day. It's what I had before. I can't get two hundred fifty thousand more dollars out of my, uh, you, you know, restaurant, and so it's that is just one little. So a way for him to do that to bring those two ends together would be to lose some of the employees, so he doesn't have to pay the higher wages. I suppose he could try to get. A he could four, just serve a, you people know, at the counter instead of at the tables. And he can do all of it, maybe. Right, or it, where you've got six people, maybe as a wait staff at any one particular time, see if you can stretch that to five, right. or maybe down to four. Or so people are going to lose jobs. If he's the restaurateur, maybe it's hiring no one. Or if he's the only guy in town, maybe he ends up going like, I'll go work for somebody else because I'm not going to make any money. And, 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 then, and then you got one less diner, one more empty store in town. And we're out of time already. That's how quickly. We didn't even talk about minimum wage. We, next time. Next time. We'll have to continue it right, on. We will. Because we can't do it now. Bob Oaks, right. thanks for joining us. It, it's a complicated discussion. It seems so simple, but there's so much to it. Thank you folks for joining us. We'll see you for our next edition of Assembly Calendar.